In our quest to find an answer to the question what everything is made up of, we have reached a situation where we have understood that a deterministic theory is not going to work. What we really need a probabilistic theory something that uh, might sound a little counterintuitive to start with. Well, when I say little that is an understatement it sounded very very counterintuitive and uh, so things like what you see here God rolling dice these are things that uh, were uh, sort of uh, inspired in spheres beyond the scientific one and Einstein eventually made this very famous statement uh, where he said God does not play dice. I encourage you to find out what Stephen Hawking had said about this statement of Einstein. But this God rolling dice is something that uh, nicely depicts the situation of uh, uh, the debate that was going on about quantum mechanics at that time. Where are we? We were here. We found out that stationary states can be described by wave function and uh, we can extract the value of energy of the stationary state by making the Hamiltonian operate on the uh, wave function. So, we get an eigenvalue equation. What does that mean? Wave function knows what the particular value of energy is. You ask it and it will tell you what is the energy of your system. The question is how do you ask it? You ask it by making the Hamiltonian operator the total energy operator operate on it. And how does it give the answer? It gives the answer in the form of an eigenvalue energy eigenvalue here. That is why we say that each psi is a particular energy eigenstate. And it is worthwhile to remember that we do not have quantization yet. What we have is that this understanding that as far as energy is concerned psi knows what the energy is and you can formulate an eigenvalue equation by using the total energy operator operating on psi to give you the value of the energy as the eigenvalue. From here the postulates of quantum mechanics were formulated. Here we have called them laws of quantum mechanics. So, the first postulate is that uh, wave function contains the information about not the energy, but possibly about everything. There should be some wave function that contains the information about whatever physical observable that we are looking for. And correspondingly there must be an operator for each and every physical observable. And these operators were worked out again operator algebra is something that was developed by the time that was used in this context. And these are the operators some quantum mechanical operators that you see for different uh, classical variables. If you want to find out momentum the operator that you have to use is h cross by i d d x. If you want to find out kinetic energy well this is not very difficult to understand p x square by 2 m right. So, minus h cross square by 2 m d 2 d x 2 just remember the meaning of d d x square is d d x operating twice you have, a, have something psi you find first derivative with respect to d x then find second derivative that is basically square of operator square of operator means uh, same operator operating twice in succession. So, so on and so forth you can build a an operator for each and every classical variable. And then like what we saw in Schrodinger equation the values that come up as a result of experiment they are essentially eigenvalues of the appropriate operator a hat operating on psi n gives you a n multiplied by psi n alright. So, these are the very basic postulates and then we uh, have some interesting inferences from there also. See uh, eigenvalues have to be real right. If I want to know the momentum can my momentum be e to the power i m x? No, momentum has to be a real number it is a real quantity. So, I can only use operators that are uh, what are called Hermitian. Hermitian means the eigenvalue Hermitian operators always have 
real Eigen values ok. There is something called turnover rule and all we do not have to go into that in this course right. So, many Eigen functions can be possible for a quantum mechanical operator. One more thing that I have not written here is that the quantum mechanical operators are also linear. What does that mean? If a hat operates on say psi to give me a multiplied by psi, then if you simply multiply n by psi, a multiply psi by n, what will happen? A hat will operate on this to give me n multiplied by a hat dot psi that is n multiplied by a multiplied by psi. Another way of writing this is a hat operates on uh, some c 1 coefficient multiplied by phi 1. See I do not necessarily have to write psi for wave function I can write whatever I want. So, I will write phi here plus c 2 operating on phi 2 that will be c 1 multiplied by a hat phi 1 plus c 2 multiplied by a hat phi 2. So, the operators have to be linear as well these come from the uh, postulates. Another thing is all Eigen functions of quantum mechanical operators are orthogonal. In fact, it is I like to say that solutions of Schrodinger equations are such that uh, they are actually linear combinations of wave functions that are orthogonal to each other. What does that mean? What it means is that uh, the solutions are all in some kind of a function space. What is the meaning of function space? Let us say I am talking about momentum. I have Px, I have Py, I have Pz. So, if I have a momentum, any momentum P, it is not very difficult for you to see that why am I writing P hat? P here is a vector is not it. So, it is not very difficult for us to see that this P is really a vector sum of P x plus P y plus P z right. So, in P space momentum space I can write any momentum as a linear combination of the orthogonal mutually orthogonal P x P y and P z orthogonal means they do not have components along each other ok. So, similarly any wave function can be written as a linear sum of uh, a set of wave functions that are orthogonal to each other and orthogonality means this. Essentially it is the same condition as a condition for orthogonality of vectors, but it is written in a little more perhaps intimidating form integral psi m star x psi m dx is equal to 0 and this notation is something that we will use again and again. So, let me just write what it is this is called Dirac's bracket notation. In this notation this vector is called the bra vector and if I write psi in it then I really mean psi star. The vector facing opposite this is called the ket vector if I write psi in a ket vector I mean just psi, but when you uh, join them up uh, I get something more than just psi star psi. If I write like this bra psi ket psi or psi psi in bracket then what I mean is this bra psi will be psi star ket psi will be psi, but when you write in the bracket when you combine bra and ket it really means that I am integrating over the entire range of whatever coordinate it is in terms of which the wave functions are written all right. So, we are going to use this bracket notation uh, very often because it is easier to draw angular brackets rather than this curly integral signs 
well jokes apart uh, it makes things a little easier ok. So, solutions of Schrodinger equation are really linear combination of wave functions that are orthogonal to each other. So, these are the ground rules the postulates of quantum mechanics that we are going to use. Now, with this what we are what are we saying? We are saying that uh, to know the value of any observable the only coordinate we have to be honest is only variable we have is psi and psi tells us what is the uh, property when you make a measurement and when you make a measurement let us say the property has a value p. Now, this sort of philosophical question that was asked was that what happens uh, before you make the measurement is the property p or is it something else. And Einstein and a group of scientists who supported him believed that that value has to be p. This is called the realist view what they said is that oh, come on you measure it is p immediately before what value would, have, would it have been it has to be p nothing else. Then the question is why can we not measure it they said we cannot measure it because your theory is not complete. See both theory uh, you had n principal quantum number with that you could not explain fine structure you could not explain Zeeman effect. So, to explain it further you have to bring in more coordinates so to speak quantum numbers in another, another way we can call them coordinates you have to bring in the coordinate L coordinate M to account for spin you have to bring in S. So, realist view was this quantum mechanical formulation of Schrodinger is not complete and psi is not the only thing if you bring in something else you will be able to say what it was before the measurement. But orthodox view by Bohr and Eisenberg and a lot of other scientists this is also called Copenhagen inter interpretation orthodox view said that you cannot measure. Before measurement according to orthodox view the system exists in an entangled state. So, it is very important to understand the difference between the realist and the orthodox view they agree more or less that uh, we have not been able to say what the value is before the measurement. The difference is the realist view says that the value is p it is just that your theory is not complete so you could not measure. Orthodox view says the theory is complete it is indeterminate not measurable like, like delta x into delta p x right greater than uh, equal to h by 4 pi that is not because of any uh, shortcoming of the instrument is a natural threshold. Here also they are saying nature is such that the system exists in an entangled state you cannot really tell what is n what is l nothing you, you can say nothing. Only when you make the measurement you uh, understand what the state it is in and not only that depending on what measurement you do the system is created in that particular way. The uh, property of the observable is determined by the property of the observer. Of course, there was this uh, agnostic view which says we do not know and we do not care how does it matter let us work with what we are doing and that is actually a uh, an easy way of not thinking too much. But then uh, uh, what has happened is that this debate has gone on for 30 years only in 1965 uh, Thomas Bell did some experiment to prove conclusively that the orthodox view is correct and realist view is not correct. Whoever is interested in learning a little more about this I recommend to you the uh, book on quantum mechanics by Griffiths. Uh, so, if you read it you will uh, th this issue is discussed in chapter 1 and the last chapter. So, uh, we will not be able to go that far in this course, uh, but suffice to say that it is the orthodox view that is uh, now accepted and we will uh, make occasional uh, references to this orthodox view as we go along in this course also. But now this is such a mind boggling question that it has enthralled audiences again beyond the scientific community for ages. So, there is this fantastic play called Copenhagen which uh, I had the good fortune to see Tom Alter had brought it to IIT Bombay a few years ago when he was alive. Uh, so, this is all about a discussion between Bohr and uh, Eisenberg fantastic play if you get a chance to see it please uh, do see it. So, now what we are saying is that 
uh, we do not really we cannot really determine what it was before the measurement. What everybody agrees upon is that what happens after the measurement. If you make a second measurement immediately after the first one then you are going to see the same value p. Why? Because now the wave function has collapsed into an Eigen function and the Eigen function which has yielded the Eigen value that you have observed. This I am not surprised if you find this discussion to be a little uh, abstract and overwhelming right. I just wanted to introduce this we do not claim that we have solved all the answers the purpose is to raise the question and make you aware of this uh, really big issue that has troubled the best minds mankind has ever produced over many many decades. This is a fascinating field to study. We will refer to this uh, sometimes but do not worry at this point if you have not understood all of what we have said in a, a really in a nutshell. So that is what it is fine we have lived to the fact whether we understand uh, this uh, Copenhagen interpretation or not what we have lived up to the fact is that wave function contains the information about the system you can if you use an appropriate operator then it yields the value of uh, physically observable physical observables and uh, that is what you can observe experimentally as well. But the nagging question that comes back to haunt us is what is this wave function I mean everything is made up of waves what does it mean we do not see waves around. This answer came from the interpretation provided by Max Born that is what we will discuss in the next module.